Tech for Seniors, June 29th, episode, episode 14. Wow. Hey, where's Huey? I'm here. There you are. So um, Huey doesn't have his new computer. Well, he has his new computer, but he hasn't got it set up yet. So we're hoping that, uh, hoping that will happen uh, soon, right? Well, I'm going to be talking about that during my time slot. Excellent. Excellent. And Bob, welcome, Bob. Thank you. Everything's going well up in New Mexico. Well, they're starting to close things down a little bit again. We have, seem to have a spike here also. Right. Bob lives out on a ranch and he's going to shoot anyone that comes close to him, right? It's only an acre. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, of course, uh, Dewey, you're okay? You've got your power back on? You're... you're Yes, I'm doing fine. If you can hear me, I'm doing fine. Okay, that's great. Well, welcome everybody to well, welcome everybody to a uh, uh, a big show today. We have lots of exciting things to happen. I uh, hope everybody had a great week. Um, I had a really good week. Uh, I was saying earlier to everybody, uh, all our family left, and Gail and I had the house to ourselves. So we uh, so we tackled. A bunch of projects that we wanted to do and one of them was cleaning out a storage room my, now my wife calls it a storage room I call it a junk room right and it's been there for 40 years so we tackled this this week and we were cleaning out the uh, the room and we came across a couple of boxes that we forgot about and in these boxes are all our pictures from all the cruises we've done, all the trips we traveled around in our earlier years, we had this big box of pictures, thousands of them. And so uh, I said, um, we've never looked at them for 25 years. I said, chuck them out, right? So we had this big discussion on, that's part of our history. Uh, that's part of our life that has all our, you know, maybe 15 years of pictures of all the holidays we took. But so I made the argument, if you haven't ever, if you haven't ever looked at it in 25 years, what's the value of doing something with it? So the reason I'm coming up with this idea is that I think not next week, because we have a special guest next week, but the following week, I want to have a 20 minute segment on what do you guys do? What are you going to do if you find a box of pictures, like 20-year-old pictures that are in your house? What are you going to do with these? What morally do you want to do with them? Do you really think if you scan them and put them up in Google Photos, anyone's ever going to look at them? What are you going to do? We're all seniors. This is tech for seniors, right? So I'd like to know what everybody thinks they should do with their pictures. And we're going to have this is going to be not next week because Chris Gould from Geeks on Tour is coming and she's going to be our special guest next week. So she's going to talk about a whole bunch of Google Photos things for next week. But the following week, I'd like everybody to think about that. I would like to know what you guys are going to do when you come across a box of old pictures of all your family, you know, and what you're going to do with them. Are you going to just leave it there till you die and let the kids look after it or are you you know what what are your plans what are, what and I, I know you can scan them and I know we can put them into Google photos I know all the technical stuff we can do but I want to morally what what do you really want to do as an individual which is sort of a gut-wrenching thing and then I'll tell you how I resolved it with Gail and what we're actually going to do so I we, we did come up with a little plan on this but um, but I want to discuss this. I think it, I think I talked to Huey about that, and he thought that you you thought that was a great idea, didn't you, Huey? I mean, I think we should I think we should have this discussion. So that will not be this week, but it'll be it'll be the following week. It'll be and, fun. We got sixty four people on here, and we'll probably have sixty four different thoughts on it. <laughs> well, maybe, that's good. I I, I don't will. know the answer. I mean, if, if I knew the answer, I'd sort of say this. I think this is the answer, but but I don't I don't really. Uh, I don't really have an answer. Now, um, I know that uh, I've got seven minutes and my seven minutes is up, but I have to tell you, um, I won't show you the article, but there's two things that, two quick things I wanna mention. Google Photos, big upgrade in Google Photos. All the menus have changed in the Google Photos app. So please, 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 uh, if you have your uh, smartphone, whether it's the uh, Apple iPhone or whether it's an Android device, uh, 
go in and, and do the update and you'll get the new version, the new app. It's out now and everyone should have it. And the menus have all changed. You have to go to, so what you need to do in there is when you go into the app, go to Google Maps and, and it's so cool, you'll see the Google Maps actually shows you where all your pictures have been taken. It's, it's really cool. We're gonna go into it. We got, got lots of shows coming up. We're gonna talk about all the new changes that's coming up as well, okay? The other one was the other article, and I just uh, quickly, I wanna do this so I don't uh, lose some time, but did anyone see the article about the guy that bought 37 Teslas? Um, he, he, he was ordering, he was in Germany, right? And he, and he was ordering online, and he went and he clicked the button to order it. And you've all probably all done this. He clicked the button and nothing happened, right? And then he thought, darn it, you know, and he wanted to order this class. He kept clicking the button, right? <laughs> he ordered, what is it, 28 or 37, 37 Teslas. It was, it was $2.8 million worth of cars that he ordered. Anyway, um, he, and Tesla doesn't usually give you your money back, but they did in this case. So uh, that was a pretty stressful time. Anyway, all right, uh, Healy, let's get, uh, oh no, Bob, sorry, Bob, Bob, you're on. Here's the security news roundup for the week ending June 26, 2020. Avast researchers discovered 47 apps on Play Store with intrusive ads and stealth features. The main shared feature across these apps is the appearance of a mobile game. Further research showed the games are generally a repackage of an older version of the game with added layers of ads and the hide icon ability. Once the user downloads the app, a timer starts within the app. The user is allowed to play the game for a set period of time after which the timer triggers the hide icon features of the app. Once the icon is hidden, the app starts to display ads throughout the device without needing further action from the user. The apps have the ability to draw over other apps to display timed ads that can't be skipped. Several apps even open the browser to display intrusive ads. Security researchers came across a new ransomware family called CryCryptor that masqueraded as a Canadian COVID-19 tracing app. CryCryptor emerged just days after the Canadian government announced it would support the development of a national voluntary tracing app for COVID-19 called COVID Alert. Fortunately, ESET, the Slovakian security firm, was able to develop a decryption tool that enabled victims of CryCryptor to recover their files for free. Wells Fargo customers targeted with phishing attacks using calendar invites. American Banker reports that people are being targeted with phishing emails that impersonate the Wells Fargo security team and use innocent looking calendar invitations as clickbait. Victims are asked for sensitive information like the username, login, card pin, or number of their personal accounts held at Wells Fargo. As of Friday, the campaign had targeted between 15 and 20,000 people. It's unclear at this point how many have been duped by this scam. Twitter informs customers of exposed billing details. Social network giant Twitter emailed its business customers this week to warn them of a security lapse that may have put their billing information at risk. Standard procedure had been to store business clients' billing data in the browser's cache, but this made the information vulnerable to being accessed by others. Data stored in the cache included email addresses, phone numbers, and the last four digits of the user's credit card. As soon as we discovered this was happening, we resolved the issue and communicated to potential impacted clients to make sure they were aware and informed on how to protect 
themselves moving forward, commented Twitter spokesperson Laura Pecos. 80,000 printers exposed online. The nonprofit organization Shadow Server Foundation, committed to improving cybersecurity practices around the world, published a report warning companies about leaving printers exposed online. Printers connected to the internet without access controls or authorization mechanisms in place are vulnerable to attacks such as data theft, service tampering, and remote command execution. Scanning billions of routable addresses around the world, the researchers found a daily average of 80,000 exposed printers online. Users are advised to enable their printer security function. Avast Omni protects all things connected. That includes your printers. That's it for this week. Stay safe. See you next week. Thank you, Bob. Wow. It's a scary place out there. All right, uh, Huey, you're up. Yes, you said everything's been going great for you this week. It has for me too. It all fell apart this morning. As a lot of you know that I uh, ordered a new, or I'm getting a new computer and I ordered it, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But I also ordered a desk to go under it. And it came on Saturday and I had somebody here to put it together because it's a uh, L-shaped uh, five foot in, in either direction. And I was hoping to have the desk started this morning and be able to put a computer on it. And we opened the box up and two of the desk tops, the two in each direction are cracked in half on both of them. So it's gotta be, the 128 pound package has gotta go back to Amazon. And so I had, I spent a lot of this morning making arrangements and there is somebody does answer the phone. He was in Costa Rica, but somebody does answer a phone once in a while from Amazon. And he was able to tell me, yeah, somebody uh, can pick it up uh, from UPS and here's all the information that's all in the works. But that's how I spent my morning troubleshooting that and then trying to look for another desk. So right now I'm working on a uh, two foot little bookcase it's a two shelfer and it's uh, uh, about a foot deep. And that's how I got my Chromebook on it. So I'm working off of a Chromebook today. But I did want to show you a little bit about the computer that I'm, I have purchased and what I had before. So I'm going to share my, uh, um, I hope I can. Yep, share the desktop and share it. There we go, and files. This is, let's see, right here. This is the current computer. You can see the size of it. Two hands are holding it. It's a, about seven years old, and it actually hangs on the back of the monitor like that. That's the old monitor. The monitor died about a year, about oh, not quite a year ago. So I have it on just a, a, a another, actually I have it on a TV, but I have it, it, it hangs on the, the Visa uh, poles that are in the back of your TV or your monitor that where you can po uh, uh, post it or put it on a wall mount uh, is the same size as the bracket that comes with this NUC and you see uh, from Intel. And uh, just to show you the inside of it, this is what it looks like. Uh, let me go to the next one first. Uh, let's see here. There. There's what the inside looks like. There's a SSD card right here. And then there's some, uh, uh, there's uh, 16, there's two eight gigabyte memory cards there. And then sitting on top of them is a one terabyte hard drive. And that's all in that little box. And that's what I've been using for the last almost seven years. And so I have now gone out. Let's see. I want to make sure I'm not closing the wrong thing here. If I disappear. I click the wrong X. There we go. Uh, so it's my new computer. And it came uh, Wednesday, I think it was. It looks like this. 
was just a box. Well, then I opened the box, and there it was inside the box. And there's the box in front of the, the new monitor with a cover over it. And upside down, this is the other side of what it looks like with the different connectors. And the front side, this is what it looks like in the box. And these are the parts that come with it. Let me close this in case that you're seeing that. This is the computer, the power unit, and the, the the wiring, and the bracket. Uh, this is the bracket that goes on the back of the monitor, the screws that holds it, uh, the the plate to the monitor, and then there's two little screws that go in the back of the nuck, and so it can hang on there. And there's an HDMI cable so I can have it. Uh, talk to the monitor. That's it. And once I, I got it, I plugged it in. You can see it next to it. I didn't hang it yet because I knew I was going to take it apart and put it together and take it apart a couple of times. But it's sitting here. I got a network cable going into it. I've got the power unit. Notice that I've got it labeled. I'm going to talk about labels in just a moment. And when I plugged it in, this is what I got. So it was ready to go. It asked me a few questions. Okay, do you have internet? And I said, yes. And it said, okay. First, it wanted the Wi-Fi. Uh, and then it said, okay, let's go ahead. And we were connected. And this, as soon as it came up, I went to uh, settings. I went to the uh, about the system. And you'll notice that it, the Windows was installed on the 22nd. I got it on the 24th. Today's the 29th, so it's only a week old. And you'll notice that it was also the updated 2004 version of Windows 10 Pro. And I went to see if there were any updates for it, and it had all of the updates done already on it. So it's ready to rock and roll. And I went to the this PC. You can see I have four terabytes it's an SSD card, four terabytes in the machine. It should scream once I get to use it. Uh, we're back to the box now. So let me tell you what I had to do. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'll unshare uh, if I can figure out where I am here. Stop share. There we go. Uh, in order to make room for the desk that I don't have, I had to move all of the uh, current desk, which is just a, a you know just a small, very small desktop. Uh, I had to move it over to the other side of the room. Well, I've lived here five and a half years, so when you start unplugging wires, they're dusty. Boy, are they dusty! So I had to clean. I had to take off each wire, wipe it down, and label it. Because if you don't label it, you don't know where the wires go when you go back to it. So I had one for the NUC. I had another one for the network. I had another one for another piece that goes into it, another one for the hub, for the uh, uh, USB hub, and so on. And I labeled everything as I took it apart, put it in a big stack, took all the drawers out of the desk, picked up the desk, and it was he it's a heavy desk, and moved it over to the other side of the room, put everything back on, including the the – the 32 inch TV that I use as a monitor currently and plugged it all back in. And you know, every single time you take a computer apart and put it back together, it never works. It worked. I can't believe it. It worked totally. Everything is fine. The only thing is I don't have enough room in front of it to put a chair. I have to sit on the edge of the bed and that's very uncomfortable. And so right now I, I'm using, that's why I'm using this uh, Chromebook and why I'm sitting at this little desk and uh, why you see the uh, uh, web around behind me. I have no place to put it on the bed, so uh, I didn't want my whole room to be, as a Robin, go in and out of the room without it bothering you. So here we are. But anyway, I've got a computer that's ready to go and nothing to p put it on. So hopefully... Uh, I was going to say... I was going to say we expect greatness from that new computer, but, oh, we've had great, but we've had greatness from you in the past. So I'm not going to say 
I'm just going to say the greatness should continue with the new computer. How's that? Yeah, yeah, and, and, well, and you, you, could, you could just that. lay down and set it on your stomach, it'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> but you saw the size of it is not very big. All right, uh, thanks, Huey. Uh, and uh, so, all right, so I'll turn it back to you. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let me see, we'll get this going here. And you should be able to, can you see my power? Can everyone see my PowerPoint? Yes. Can, okay, that's good. Oh yeah, the PowerPoint, yeah. It, okay. We see all of the, there you go. Okay, great. So today um, I wanted to talk, in the next 20 minutes, I wanted to talk about ring doorbells. Now, first of all, I'm gonna give a plug for Bill James. I know Bill James, is, I talked to him on Friday and I said, please come and listen to this. Because Bill James, of course, with APCUG is doing a whole series on Windows, but he's doing it also on automation that will also include home ring doorbells and, and also on a number of automations. And he has a different one and he uses for his doorbell. Uh, uh, today I'm going to cut to the chase and because we only have a small amount of time, what I wanted to do is talk about the five ring doorbells that you can do so so you've already made a decision you're going to get a ring doorbell and you've made a decision you're going to get ring which is made by amazon and you go to the store and you have a whole bunch of models to choose and i'm going to go and i'm going to talk through which model you should get now most people want a ring doorbell for a couple of reasons one of them is when packages arrive they like to be notified the second is of people who um steal the snatch and grabbers they come and snatch the the, the packages and, and leave so there's a variety of reasons why you might want one of these devices uh, and these are not security cameras these are doorbells these are little doorbells that that will record and 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 give you uh and i'll show you exactly what we're talking about so when you go to the store you're going to see that there are uh, these are four and i'm going to show you the fifth in a minute but uh, on the left-hand side here, you'll see this is the, the ring doorbells have been out for a while now, and it's, um, let me just get here. Uh, you'll see that this is, uh, this, oh, just a minute. The, the, uh, the one on the left here is the, uh, the $99 one is the original ring doorbell. Uh, and this is, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute. This is, uh, this can be used under battery, or it can be hardwired in, and it uh, it is a it's not a, an it, it's a 720 HDI 720 camera, so the camera isn't as good as the uh, the HD camera here on the video doorbell too. But this uh, this particular one you can uh, there's a battery in it, or or you can hardwire it in. The second one that you'll see is the video doorbell two, and this is the same as video doorbell one except. The batteries again. It's it's a it's a battery operated one, or you can hardwire it into your doorbell. So exactly the same as the first one, but it has a better camera, and it has uh, the battery pops out in a, in a uh, uh, it's a bigger battery in it. So uh, this is a, a little bit better model. Uh, then we have this is a, actually a peephole camera. This this one here that you actually can put, if you live in a condo, you want, it's a battery only, and you can clip it on the peephole in your door. So uh, on the outside. So if you're in a condo or an apartment or something like, like Byron, where you live in, if you wanted to put this on the outside of the door, this would be your, you could do this. And this is battery only. And then this one is the one I have, and this is called the Ring Video Doorbell Pro. And this is, um, this is wired only. Now your doorbell that you have on your door will be either wired or it will be not wired. And if it's wired, then it will be 12 volts and it will go through a transformer and you'll have a little chime and you push that, it goes ding dong. But some of you may not have wires at your front door. So that's why, uh, that's why there's these different wired and non-wired options. And then we're gonna talk about, I'll just, before I flip the slide in a minute, I'll show you the latest one, which is the, is the video doorbell version three and the three pro. So I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. The reason I, I wanted to discuss this with everybody is that there is a universal problem with video doorbells and it's the complaints 
And this is where all the complaints about these devices arise. And, the, and I'm gonna be showing you some videos on this and exactly why this happens. The whole problem is, is that when you look at doorbells that have batteries in them, like the video doorbell and the video doorbell two here, the first two, uh, and also you'll see with the version three, I'll show you in a minute, they go to sleep. So they all go to sleep. And when the motion comes along, the motion detection comes along, the, the doorbells wake up and start recording. If you've ever watched a delivery person delivering to your house or you watch a snatch and grabber come to get your parcel, they race up to your house, leave or grab the parcel and leave. So the problem everybody complains about these cameras is, is because they only get the back of the head. By the time the camera wakes up and turns on, the person's leaving and they get only get the back of the head. And they're all complaining that why can't they get, get them when they come up? And that's a problem. And it's a problem with all the cameras that use batteries because in the video doorbell here and the video doorbell two and the three I'm gonna show you in a minute is they all have batteries or they have, they have batteries or you can hardwire them in. But the software is still the same. The software still puts them to sleep. Doesn't matter whether they're hardwired in or battery. The software puts them to sleep and they have to be woken up by motion. In mine, which is the Video Doorbell Pro, which is only wired in, there's no battery in there, then it is on all the time. So it doesn't need to be woken up. So that is why this one is the, the one that I would recommend you get if you, if you have wiring. All right, and this is the, uh, and this is the, uh, this is the uh, Video door. this is the latest one, this is the three, and so uh, I'm not gonna go into, the big difference with the three is this new one, is it works on the 2.4 and five gigabert, gigabertz wireless, um, um, you know, um, that you've got on your, on your router. So it, it uses both, which is good. But what the three plus is, the one on the right here, what's the difference between the video doorbell three and the video doorbell plus? Again, this has a battery in it, but to sort of combat the problem of getting the camera going, it takes some slow motion, it it's called a pre-roll. It takes some slow motion black and white while the camera is sort of getting woken up, right? So it's trying, they're trying to overcome this whole issue of, of, of not waking up fast enough, okay? Now, uh, and again, here's some prices. Um, I'm not gonna really spend a lot of time with that. Here's what happens when you get, this is the package I got, the Pro, and it comes with some, some face plates here that you can put on. And I also, this is it's, on the left-hand side, you'll see it's mounted on my door. And on the, uh, on the right side, you'll see this is at the bottom here, they have chimes. And I really like the chimes. You can plug these chimes in wherever that you want in the house. I have a bunch of them around. And so when someone pushes the doorbell, the chime rings and you can put all sorts of different things on the chimes. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, when you get the, uh, when you get your, um, the other thing about these doorbells is they're insanely easy to install. So these are the parts in my, uh, in my ring, uh, my ring doorbell. These are the parts that I got. Now, the first thing you're going to be worried about is when you go to hook this thing up, you might be scared of electricity. Well, the first thing you do is you turn the power off, but if you, if anything happened, we're only talking about 12 volts. It's not even going to give you a shock. So we're talking about really, really low power. The other thing is they give you all sorts of connectors here. Oh, the other thing is, so you take your old ring, you take your old rusted little doorbell off to put one of these on and there's two wires. Now, if you're like me, I don't know anything about positive and negative, right? It's, it's, it's Greek to me, it's electricity doesn't matter. There's no positive and negative on the ring doorbell. doesn't matter which side you hook it up to. They even give you some extra wires here. So if you have a, if you have, if you're short, you can just add the wires on here and they will, uh, it, it extends the wires out a little bit from your house. So it's easy to connect onto the doorbell. And so this, uh, this is really simple to install. You need one other little thing you need to do is you need to um, come up here and this is the chime this is the old chime that we have in our house. 
it needs, you need, it's another little device you need to clip in and it's called a power booster. This particular, this particular machine needs a little more power and this is called, this is a power booster and you, you have to just, this is our, the doorbell chime in our house. You pop the cover off and you just clip these on. You do need to know the positive and negative, but it's well, well marked on there. And you need to clip this little device in there, put the plate back on, all right? So that's how you, that's how you install it. Now, uh, this is um, the analysis that I'm gonna show you. I did not make this video. I'll show you my video I made in a minute. On the right-hand side is the original ring doorbell. That's the $99 one. On the left-hand side is the one I have, okay? Now I'm gonna play you, uh, I'm gonna play you a video and you're gonna see the video of someone coming up to the house with both these running at the same time. All right, here we go. So here you share your sound. We're not hearing anything. No, no, no. Yep. You can hear me. Okay. Let me just go back here. Well, we'll keep going here. So the one on the the left is the first thing you're gonna notice. If we come back, let's play this again. This is mine. You'll see this just as he comes around the corner. This is the original one. You see how much later it was when the back, this is the one on the left is on all the time. The one on the right took a while to turn on, right? You saw the difference, okay? Now watch what happens here. And away they go. So you'll see how, how much better that worked. Now watch again as we come back up in here. And this is the, uh, the $99 one. And you'll see it's low light. And watch what happens when we actually bring the picture up. You'll see it's very, 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 very grainy. And you'll see if So if you try to look at him, and this is the original $99 one that took a while to come on, you'll see that it's quite grainy actually when you try to look at him. This is the... Uh, this is the, uh, uh, you know, that's, again, that picture sort of, you can make out who it is, but it's, so, so the $99 one doesn't really, the camera isn't as good as it needs to be. Now, here's the one that I have. He comes up and you can see him right away. It's quite clear and, uh, and, away, and away you go. And that's, that's, that's the difference. Now, we'll go to the next one here. And we're going to play this one. Now, watch. I want you to watch a couple of things. First of all, this is my house. This is my house when we're um, when we're uh, when the this is an Amazon delivery that came to my house. So the first thing I want you to notice is that how fast the cameras on all the, the the motion sensors on all the time because it's hardwired in all the time. And as he comes around the corner there, you'll see him coming right up to the house and notice that he's running. Okay. They all the delivery guys run. So watch, watch this. Now, if you'd had, if you'd had, um, if you had, and that's the, that's the, the still image of them, in which you can see quite clearly. But if you had had um, one of the, the $99 one or an Arlo doorbell or something like that, all as you'd see was the head when they turn around and left because the camera doesn't turn on fast enough and that ends up being a problem. So uh, I just wanted to show you that. Let's go back to a uh, screenshot from current slide. Let's do this now. And we've, we did that one. So this is, uh, so you can combat that. So if you look at, this is my driveway. And as you come up the driveway, you'll see, um, you'll see the camera from the door is tucked in right, at, right beside the door there on the right-hand side. So uh, the other way that you could do it is put a second camera looking down the driveway and you'd be sure to get them as they came up the driveway. And, and, and you'll see this in a minute. I have an Arlo camera sitting there and this is the Arlo camera sitting there to pick up whoever. But if you had didn't have the Arlo system, then you could have a second ring camera out here that would pick him up as he's coming up the driveway. 
Now they're gonna have to come around the corner here up onto the porch, but the camera, my camera's on all the time. But if you had one of the cameras that was battery operated, of course it's gotta turn on. And by the time he gets around the corner, he would deliver the package and you, you wouldn't catch him because you just, by the time it turns on, you're gonna get his head as you're leaving. So here's my camera, is it sitting, it's sitting by my door here and you can see it and that's, uh, that's what you just saw. And, uh, and here's a, here's a close up of it. I would tell you, I, I got a mounting plate that actually turns it a little bit and turns it, turns the camera a little bit towards the door. You don't need to do that. I, it was sort of a waste of money doing that because, because it's, it's a really wide angle camera and you really don't need that. And the final thing was, um, in these cameras, uh, sorry, if you have a house that's built before 1982, in 1982, for some reason, they changed the uh, transformers, the frequency. So if you have an old house that's before 1982, it's very likely the transformer won't work in these new doorbells. Uh, the only thing it would work is in an old chime that you have that's 1982, because it won't work in anything else. So uh, I re uh, these are so the the uh, the transformers are cheap. They're 20 bucks, and uh, but they do have three wires and 110 volts. So you might need an electrician to help you uh, help you replace that. But some if you do live in a very old house that has an old chime, then uh, you may want uh, to um, to do that uh, to to get a new transformer. Uh, now to let you know that um, you got to get your mindset about this. That, that if you do not pay for a plan, then you have an expensive doorbell that does nothing more than that. And so uh, I'm basically um, with the ring doorbell, the basic plan for the one unit, this is Canadian price, it's $3 US per month. And that allows you to record all the motion sensors and all the, all the stuff that the doorbell does. Um, if you don't, if you say I don't want a plan, I think Bill's has his has a hard drive in his unit, so you don't have to actually uh, pay for a plan. So uh, you have to look at this and, and sort of factor that in. Because if you can't record anything, then you just have an expensive doorbell. And I think that's it. We'll probably have some questions about that later. Uh, and I'm going to turn this over. That, so that's on the doorbells. So the reason I wanted to mention that is if you're going to buy a ring doorbell, buy the one. If you have wired, get the wired only doorbell because that will have be on all the time. Now, um, Nest, which is makes it popular, they couldn't sell Nest. No one was buying Nest. It was horrible and it took a long time to turn on. Nest just brought out a new plan now where they leave the doorbell on all the time, 24 seven recording. And I think it's 120, 10 bucks a month or $120 a year, but it continually records, which gets around the whole problem of the slow startup, okay? So I just wanted everybody, if you're thinking about a doorbell, I know that Bill's gonna be doing a bigger talk on this whole thing, um, but I wanted to bring up this whole latency issue so that you're not unhappy when you buy your ring doorbell. All right, Huey, I'll send it over to you. You better unmute yourself. And share. Uh, no, I'm, no, I'm gonna, gonna say share. Ron's gonna handle the, the video part because I'm on a Chromebook and I'm not sure it's gonna work. So we're gonna let Ron do it. Uh, I have been looking at some of the websites that I have in my favorites and I wanted to share some of them with you. So I'm going to share one. Uh, Ron, you need to share your screen again. Yeah, I'm there. just going to do that. I want to just uh, make sure the sound is on. Yeah, we're going to do that. Just hold on a sec here. While he's doing that, uh, the first one is is a website called Flip. They also have a an app for your iOS or for your Android, but you can also just go to the website with your PC, with your Mac or with any of the devices. devices. All right, we should be shared there, right? We'll see, is it Flip or Klein? Flip.com. Do you remember the days when we used to get a Sunday newspaper and it was one big thick newspaper 
And in the middle of it were all these circulars and ads for all the local stores. Now the newspapers hardly have any of those ads, and, uh, and it costs you a lot of money. Well, if you miss those circulars and all those ads, you can find them in the front of each of the stores every week. Well, you don't want to go around to each of the stores and pick them up and then have to go home, look at, look them over, and then go back to the store. Why not go to Flip.com, or if you have an Android or an iOS uh, device, you can download their app, and you can view all of the circulars from your area, or a good many of them anyway. I put in the zip code that I'm in, 34207. As soon as I do, it brings up all of the ads that are available as circulars that are available in my area and that are current and as i slide down here you'll see that some of your favorite stores may be here if i put in a different zip code i may get a different list of stores and the reason why is uh you know not all stores are in all areas so you're only going to see ads from your area when you put in your area code so let's take a look at let's say the walgreens ad so we click on it and there is their ad and i can flip through the various pages now there's several other things that you can do with this uh, application or uh, the website when you find something is there you can click on it it will give you more information you can clip the item and it then keeps track of all the items that you clip and it, circ and it circles them for you it creates a little shopping list for you with the I items that you clip clip or click either one uh, you can then go to a different store you can look at you can set up favorites you can look at all the circulars for this area there's 66 of them so you can just kind of go down the page and they'll take a few seconds for them to come up but you can see the varied ones that are here then there's some other things you can go to a coupon page and on that coupon page are different coupons that you can select so let's say you're going to uh, uh, you want this particular one you want to get it for 99 cents 75 percent off you click that you tell it to clip the article now you'll notice that the shopping list went to three items and there's a coupon there and if you have a loyalty card you can clip directly to their loyalty card and uh, not sure how you do that but uh, there's well I guess when you do that it automatically sends it to them and then if we go to our shopping list we can take a look Oh, I'm not signed in, so that's why it wouldn't go, but it's here. There is the, co the coffee, and there was an earlier one that, that expired because it, it was a couple of weeks ago, and when I put it in, uh, it's no longer on sale, so it shows that it's no longer on sale. So, again, going back to the circulars at flip.com. So you can do your, you can do your newspaper shopping. Uh, all online and and make a shopping list for all the different stores uh, from that. Now the next one I want to show you. Some of you uh, have seen my presentation on cutting the cord. In other words, firing your cable company and streaming all of your TV programs. Well, it's kind of hard to decide which uh, service you want to get. And there's a website that's really good to help you make that decision. So, Ron, if you'll start that. Suppose.tv. Are you one of those who have cut the cord and fired your cable company? Are you thinking about doing that? You want to know what services are available, and one of the first things you want to do is make sure you know what programs you want to have available, and then find out which of the services have those on their, on their schedules. And this is difficult. 
So if you use the website, suppose.tv, you can do it very nicely. They have what they say is billions of combinations of TV services, and it finds the best for you. So what you you have to do is set your priorities and decide what programs you want to have. So let's say I want one of the local stations. I want the... uh, uh, let's say the NBC station. Uh, by the way, you put in the area that you're in, and that it will note that. So let's say I want the NBC station, and I like the A and E under, uh, I believe it's under the entertainment, is it? Yeah, under entertainment. Notice you can see more here. Uh, so you pick and choose, and as soon as I do, the A and E network is there. And then uh, my other half likes the Hallmark Channel. So we're going to put the Hallmark Channel and the Hallmark Drama Channel. So these, and then you have to prioritize these. Which one is most important? Well, you know what? Robin comes first. So we're going to put the Hallmark Channels first. And then we're going to put NBC last. So then the ABC, or the A&E Network. So, by having that, it picks and chooses which services are available on the various, uh, through the, which of these are available on the various services. So, Philo looks like one of our better choices. It gives me an approximate cost of, for the month. All four of those are available. And there's 93 more channels. They have a free trial. There's a Philo offer available. And here's another one that has all four. Here's another, here's another, here's another. But here's one that doesn't have the A and E, but it has the other three. So that one I might not be interested in. But, uh, and you'll notice up here are some arrows, so I can go. Click that, and it will go to the next one. And as I'm adding more you can see sometimes this one here the NBC isn't available and there are other ones so as you add more and more let's say I wanted the uh, uh, Paramount Network and I also want uh, let's pick another one here Uh, let's say the National Geographic and I want National Geographic before I want the NBC so I'm changing my priorities and so now you'll see If we go back, we're back on the first page again, there's a different one first. There's a sling that has all of them. And so does Vidgo have all of them. Now, Philo doesn't have National Geographic, so it's moved it over. And then the sling. So you can go in, you can prioritize what you want. First, you you make a list of the ones you want. You put them in the order that you want. And then what you do is refine and you uh, and look for the best choices. And you can move across. Sometimes it's combinations of them. Uh, as an example, let's go a couple of pages over. So in order to get all of them, I might have to go with sling, either the orange plus the blue. And then there's a four extras plus low cast. Uh, here's another one that's Hulu, live TV, and Philo, uh, and Philo in order to get all of them. And so that starts getting up there at seventy four ninety five because there's a combination of different ones with different pricing. So great website to decide, help you decide what channels you want and then what services provide those. That's suppose.tv. Thank you, Huey. Yeah, That's great. Uh, just a couple of things uh, real quick because I know I'm using up my time here. I've used up my time. But the uh, uh, low cast that was listed on several of those just came into this area. It's free over-the-air uh, TV stations, but it's, uh, it's streamed. And there's, there are only in 19 areas in the country right now. Uh, it is free, but they have a lot of advertising in it. Uh, uh, so that <clears throat> helped with some of the pricing and bringing in some of the local stations. Not all the services do provide the local stations, and in most areas you have to put an outside antenna up for that. But uh, it's a great site to decide what's the best service for this for the ch- the must see channels that you need to have. Okay, thanks okay. for the information, Dewey. You're up. I'll turn on my mic. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to present this week, but a uh, couple of things 
It happened, and I thought I worked my office to help other people know about this. <clears throat> you know, for years I've been booting up my laptop and never had uh, Microsoft put any, any uh, programs on my computer that I didn't ask for. But a couple of days ago, I started seeing when I would boot up, I'd have this big black screen. I don't have time to display it right now. That said Spotify, millions of songs free on Spotify. Sign up free, log in. And I'm thinking, well, why are they doing this? Well, yes, about two days ago, I decided to go to settings and then apps. And I found out that actually I had about 100 apps on my computer, over 100 apps. But uh, I went through the list and I couldn't find anything bad except for three of them, including Spotify. And I thought, who the heck installed Spotify? I didn't. Apparently, Microsoft put it on or allowed it to be put on. And uh, uh, I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to read my text because I'll be a little smoother. The last three days, each time I boot up my Dell computer laptop, I've been, I've been greeted with an advertisement to activate Spotify. I simply can't ever uh, call the book, book booting up to an advert and covering my home screen. I did a little investigation and found that Microsoft is now taking the liberty of installing unwanted, non-essential apps on Windows 10 computers without asking permission. To solve this mystery, I went to settings and then to apps and found a listing called apps and features uh, uh, with more than 100 apps on my computer. I reviewed the entire list and found only three apps including Spotify, that I would classify as unwanted because I had not put them on or they were not connected with Windows or Dell or Intel. You know what I mean. Fortunately, the list of apps was sortable by name, size, or date. I chose to sort the list of 100 by date and discovered that all three of the unwanted apps had been installed on my computer within the last several weeks. Uh, and also, I found out that I, by highlighting the app under this sorting, I was able to delete these unwanted apps. Windows 10 users should be aware of what appears to be an egregious new direction that Microsoft is taking by allowing this to happen. And the user can fight back by going to settings and apps to delete the unwanted apps, okay? So that's the end of that message. Well, then another thing happened. I was watching some things on YouTube uh, the other evening, and uh, I saw a, a YouTube 11-minute video, which was uh, called uh, Major Problems with Windows 10, the 2004 update. Now, 2004 means you know, 20, the year 2020, fourth month, April of 2020. Now, most of you, including Joanne and I, are still using, uh, are still only have the Windows 10 update that's called the 1903, which means it's from 2019, third month, started rolling out, I think, around June or July of last year. Uh, <clears throat> The strong advice of the computer expert who did this YouTube video is to not intentionally download the update, but rather wait until Microsoft fixes any bugs. And he went to outline the major bug with, that he found in this Windows 10 update. And uh, it, it details the bug in the defrag system that defrags a solid state drive. He didn't clarify if it would do the same thing to non-solid state drives, but if you have a solid state drive, you will keep on defragging over and over, multiple times daily, even if you have it set to only defrag, say once every week or two. So an unfortunate side to this, uh, uh, to these major Windows updates now, and I learned this, is that if you get a buggy update, you only have 10 days to reverse or undo the update according to the video. Apparently, this is a change in the way Microsoft puts out its major Windows updates. So keep that in mind. 
if you get the up, if you get an update and you find some problems, probably if you can't solve the problem, then reverse the update. And you can do this by going to settings and uh, choose update and security, and then just follow it logically through the update links until you have a chance to select the update that you wish to undo. Now, I thought that would be the end of my presentation, but this morning I was reading my Minneapolis Star Tribune newspaper as I do every morning, since I live here in the land of 10,000 lakes. There's a, uh, there's a computer writer for the Star Tribune by the name of Steve Alexander. And almost every time I read his column, I learn something. And I'm gonna read this very quickly. Question to Steve. <clears throat> I converted my Windows 7 PC to Windows 10 in 2016 when Microsoft was offering the upgrade for free, but I didn't like Windows 10, so I choose to undo the upgrade and continue with Windows 7. But now that there are no longer updates for Windows 7 security updates, I want to install Windows 10 once again. An IT fellow told me that I might still be able to get it for free even though the free upgrade offer expired several years ago. Is this true? So the question is, can you still, if you're among the, uh, oh gosh, what is it? 25% of computer users are still using Windows 7. Yes, you can still get the free upgrade to Windows 10, even though Microsoft, the Microsoft offer expired in 2017. Gotta hurry. The download and installation process remains available for all Windows 7 or 8.1 PCs that can handle Windows 10. However, you have to be very, very careful that you follow the proper instructions in doing this. And I would strongly suggest that you go to a very fine computer, in my opinion, computer website called bleepingcomputer.com bleepingcomputer.com and you could look for a uh, uh, search for under this this particular set of words you can still upgrade to windows 10 for free here's how so bleepingcomputer.com search for an article called you can still upgrade to windows 10 for free and here's how so i think my time is up and the computer program is over if you have any questions, uh, either send, in, send me an email or send Ron something and he'll forward it to me. Bye-bye. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Dewey. You know something? It's 10 o'clock, an hour's gone by. Oh my gosh, we're finished. Um, I wanna thank Huey. Huey, hopefully you'll get your desk and your computer going. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you hope so too. Bob, stay safe, eh? Hey, good job, all. Yeah, so Bob, stay safe and and uh, and see is you your next power week. back? Yeah, yeah. See, is Dewey is your power back up yet? No, not yet. Eh? Okay. All right. Um, stay safe, and we will see everybody next week. And remember, Chris Gould is coming on next week. She's Geeks on Tour. She's a she's a platinum expert on Google Photos. We'll be talking about uh, uh, a lot of things in Google Photos next week. And uh, please get your Google Photos app updated on your phone, either the iOS or Android, because they, the, it's a huge new upgrade that has just come out. All the menus have changed and they've done some real cool stuff. We'll be talking about that in the future. Be sure and come back next, uh, next Monday. Uh, and we also take these. So we went into the, we didn't talk a lot about where you can find these editions, but we can, but we can, we certainly tape all these so you can watch the old editions as well. Listen, thanks everyone for coming. Stay safe. We appreciate you. We appreciate you uh, coming to listen to us. And we will see you again in, uh, next Monday, same time, same place. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.